Good evening, and thanks for joining us here at our CBS 17 Digital Desk. I'm Garcelle Vieira, joined by meteorologist Bill Ray. So, Bill, the storm team has been tracking Tropical Storm, now Hurricane yes. Dorian, for the past few days. National Hurricane Center just released a new alert. Can you break that down for us? Yeah, we can. We can do that. We can show you exactly what's going to happen for the next several days, but we don't know exactly what's going to happen after that, and that's what makes it always so interesting. So let us show you uh, the latest tracking chart, and as you can see here, this is uh, behind, well, okay, yeah, all right, there it is. This is uh, at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, 90 mile per hour winds, and you can see currently it's 80 mile per hour winds, so it's strengthened since 2 o'clock when it was made a hurricane from 75 to 80 mile per hour winds. It's gusting to near 100, and it's moving northwest at 14 uh, as of 5 o'clock. And then as we take a look a little further down the path, and then you see it moving and intensifying to a Category 2 storm and then a Category 3 storm. Stays away from the Bahamas right now the way it looks, and you can see that's Saturday afternoon. So a lot of folks getting excited, uh, Garcelle and everybody, about the storm, thinking what's going to happen next. Well. It's going to stay in the middle of the ocean for the next three or four days, so absolutely nothing's going to happen as far as the landmass occurs until the weekend. And as we head into Sunday afternoon and into Monday afternoon, you see the storm is really going to slow down because uh, the uh, difference, I mean, right here between that 24 hours and that 24 hours tells you it's going to slow down. Be a category, probably come ashore as a category three storm if it doesn't change, and then two, but we always have the hardest time with the intensities of these storms and the forecast, so I would take that with a grain of salt. But this latest path is a little further south. At noontime, it was up here. So it's a little shift in the hurricane center, but you still see the variable down to Miami and all the way up into South Georgia for possibly coming ashore. So that's what we have to keep an eye on as we go through the period. So let me hit the map here. This looks like I'm doing magic. There it is. Uh, there's the satellite picture. Went right over St. Thomas. And uh, this one of the rare storms right over St. Thomas as a hurricane. And now it's north of St. Thomas. And you can see it there on the full picture. The town, Cockburn Town. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever heard of Cockburn Town? I have not. Have you ever heard of the Turks and Caicos? I have. That's on Grand Turk Island. So just to put it in perspective. And then you see Nassau in the Bahamas. So a close-up look at the satellite picture shows most of the heavy convection now to the north of St. Thomas. And San Juan and Puerto Rico probably saved by this storm. I think their effects are going to be minimal. The San Juan radar, though, picking up the rain. And the heaviest bands up through the British Virgin Islands, which is right to the upper right of the S in St. Thomas. And they're moving away from them. And then there's some more down between St. Croix and St. Thomas. So they're still going to get battered for a few more hours. Uh, and then the worst of it is going to stay to the north. So we will use our magic wand. <laughs> the magic wand, please. No, oh, it won't turn. But Garcelle, what do we do when it doesn't turn? I think we're getting interference here, don't you think? It, we might. Let me try so over my head. We'll go. We'll go back to this again. So for those of you just joining us now, Bill, can you take us through this forecast track again? I can just do that, and I, I can tell you I did get the map to move, so we can go back to that. I did this, and I think it moved. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the forecast track once again is a little further south than it was earlier today, but uh, it does look like a major hurricane. Now, I got this interesting graphic, and Wes is going to show it on the show tonight, that I d built for him um, about storms that were within 100 miles of where Dorian is today since 1950. There were 17 storms, and we followed the paths of all of them. Only one hit Florida. Wow. And it was Gene, and, and I'm giving away something you're going to see on the digital show tonight. But it was fascinating because 16 of them didn't hit Florida, and what do you think with this storm? It looks like, well, it's definitely going to hit Florida. Sure. Not so fast. That's why when I started at the beginning, we know where it's going for the next couple of days, but I'm really questioning exactly Weather where in Florida it. or if it, I mean, there's, you'll see the, the chart tonight. I don't have it on this graphic, but a lot of these storms did this. Hmm. You know, and here's Raleigh at the top of your map. A lot of them did this. So, I mean, it was interesting how they avoided Florida, and this one looks like it's a sure bet to hit Florida, but we, we will see. Let me show you this next map, and if we can't change it again, we'll go back to that map. We'll keep it easy. But this is an interesting map because it's wind shear. You've heard of wind shear, right? Sure. It's upper level winds, and so we're looking over 5,000 feet. If you see blue, there's not much wind shear. So the storm is near San Juan, and you can see if it's going to move toward the Bahamas. There's a lot of blue there. There's a little one streak line of shear, but it looks like that gives it time to develop before it hits off the coast of Florida, and that shear might be gone by that time. So that's what you see right there. We're going to try one more of these little, um, come on. There we go. Hey, that moved. This, this is the upper level winds. And basically, a storm is going to follow the upper level winds. And so what we've got here 
is the, and it's going to rotate through to the other winds, but I've, I'm following, there it is, the path of least resistance, because you see there's white lines to the north over Raleigh. That's high pressure to the north. And then there's not so many lines down to the south. That's the, there, that correct one. You can see if it does that, it'll go into Florida. But if it shifts a little bit, like you're seeing on that, that would force it up the east coast. I didn't change the arrow there, but that would force it right mm. up the east coast or off to sea. Ocean water temperatures, you heard they have to be warm, right? Well, look at these. It's 84 north of where the storm is going and maybe 84, but look when it gets off the coast of Florida, 86. So those extra degrees will add That's extra right. energy uh, to, the, to the storm uh, as it approaches Florida. So that we're watching the water temperatures. And we're watching to see if I got one more better map to show you. Or we can go to the, the other one. There we go. Now this is the, you've heard of the European one. Have you heard of the European? Yeah, so we like the European map because it's a uh, graphic, because it's accurate. This one, interesting, is further south. Remember this line back here? You want to see the line back here, uh, you know, is up further north, but the actual European has it coming down around Fort Lauderdale, uh, and that's where it's been, and then it has it moving into the Gulf of Mexico, if we can get it to move here. And that's an interesting concept because that could be bad news for the panhandle of Florida. Sure. But once again, not for us up here in North Carolina. This is the American model. Now I'll tell you this, at lunchtime today, that American model that looks like it's coming in north of the path right here between Jacksonville and Cape Hatteras, I mean Cape, Cape Hatteras, Cape Canaveral, that Cape, um, that system earlier today had it doing this and coming, staying off the coast of Florida. So it shifted down. And I think that's why the track shifted down too tonight because the American model is now coming in more line. Uh, it's still, you can see, it's still off. I mean, you know, one's in North Florida and one's around uh, Fort Lauderdale. But that system would go and then rain out in the southeast if the American model is correct. So there's one more graphic if I can get to it. There it is. And that's the computer models that you see. They're very consistent you know, up through Saturday at 10 o'clock. And once again, that's why I say we know where it's going through the beginning of the weekend. And then you're going to watch them diverge a little bit. Not as much, though, Garcelle, as they did earlier today at noon. But you still see a couple outlying models that try to take it in the Atlantic. But the majority of them do bring it over Florida. So that's what we're going to be watching. And that, once again, that's Tuesday. So, I mean, we're talking the storm could come ashore Monday or Tuesday. These go past the time of landfall, just to show you where it might that go in the future. Yeah. Would be. If it didn't hit Florida, it would be Tuesday off our coast if it follows that white line. If it follows the majority of them, it will hit Florida, but by Tuesday it might be out in the Gulf of Mexico or just hanging out there. That's what those computer models mean. Did you have a, did somebody ask a question? We did not have any questions, oh. but I wanted to A, thank you for being with us. Oh, it's fun to Breaking be this down. You got a cool digital center. We sure do, like we this. sure do. But we will have much more on Hurricane Dorian coming up tonight at eight o'clock on our digital hurricane show, Eye on the Storm. Uh, our CBS 17 chief meteorologist, Wes Hohenstein, will be there, and we have a guest from WNCT. And he's going to show you that cool thing with how all these yes. storms think like they're going to Florida and they all missed it. So and we'll, we'll see. see if this one makes landfall. Yeah. But we'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock.